Hi there, and thanks for watching this video on how to set up your company profile and how to network with attendees at the 2022 Expo Expo show using the Swapcard platform. First things first, you should have received an invitation email from the Swapcard platform giving you access to the Exhibitor Center. The Exhibitor Center is the central place from which you can manage your company's attendance to the show. You can customize your company profile, manage your meeting requests, track the leads that you generate during the event, and make sure that all your team members have the right details to maximize your attendance to the event. The very first step is to complete your company profile. And to do so, go to the left-hand side of your screen and click on Company Profile. You can add multiple details to your company profile, such as videos, banners, descriptions, contact details, social media handles, and much more. To start editing your company profile, locate the Edit buttons in front of each section and click on one of them. Here, you'll see that you can add either a banner image or a video banner. For the video banner, you can add a YouTube link, a Vimeo link, or add the iframe of the video player of your choice. When it comes to the logo, it's a simple PNG or JPEG file that you will have to upload onto the platform. In case you're wondering about specificities of those design files, you'll see them noted right next to them. Now let's head to the information section. This section is about a general description of your company and adding all the products and services that your business offers. To do so, simply click on this field and select all the relevant categories for your company. Once that's done, go to the next section. This section is about adding social media handles. You'll see that the Swapcard platform handles most of um, the existing social media channels. Now you can go to the contact details section, add a few contact details like a contact email address, website link, mail address, and more. Once you have completed those different sections, you're pretty good for your company profile. There are still two other extra elements that you can add to your booth. The first one is an advertising on the left-hand side of the screen that will be visible by attendees when they visit your virtual company profile. To add one, just click on add an ad right there, select the image of your choice, resize it as you want, and make sure that the image redirects to either an external link outside of the software platform or to a product or service that you previously created. In my case, it's going to redirect outside of the event platform. There we go. The next option you have is to add a background image that will make your booth customized and extend your brand experience. To do so, click on add background, make sure to respect the specificities that are given to you by the platform, select the file of your choice, resize it if, if needed, and click on save. Once that's done, your company's profile will have your colors and will emerge the attendee on your, in your brand experience. So that's for the general company profile. Then you have the option to add documents and links that will be accessible by the audience. To do so, click on the documents and links section on the left hand side menu. Click on add documents, add a link or upload a document from your computer give a title to that document, make sure to respect the limit of characters, and you can also add a description, which is optional in this case. You can add as many documents and links as you want to your booth, so make sure to utilize this feature to the fullest. The next section available are buyer resources. Under buyer resources, you will have the ability to add different resources for the audience to learn more about what your company offers. There are different categories that you can choose from, case studies, company marketing materials, company news, COVID-19 updates, and research papers. Select, select the one that makes sense to you. We'll just create a test one as an example. So let's say that it's a case study that I'm going to name case study swap card. The title is mandatory, but once again, the description is not. I still recommend you to add a description to give as many details as possible to the audience. 
you can then add different cover pictures for that specific item. In this case, case study, you could add a cover image representing what the case study is about. Once again, make sure to respect the design specificities that are given to you by the platform. Simply click on the plus icon, select the image of your choice and upload it onto the platform. Then you can also indicate what, what type of resource you are sharing with the audience, either the brochure, a video, a website or a white paper. In this case, it's going to be a website because my case study is living online on my website. And then simply add the link to redirect the visitor to that specific piece of content. Once that's done, you can just close this window and add another item if you wanted to. So that's it for the company profile. That's how you can fully customize your company profile and share as many details, as many materials with the audience as you can. The very next step is about meeting requests. So head to the meeting section using the menu of the Exhibitor Center. From that section, you will be able to manage all the meeting requests that are received um, by you during the event. You will be able to accept, decline meeting requests or assign them to specific team members. The other section related to meetings are your company's availabilities. If you know that you won't be available at a specific time of the day because you're having a lunch break, for example, or because no one else is available at your booth, make sure to uncheck those meeting slots so the attendees cannot take meetings with you at those times. Don't worry, you still have the option to uh, deny a request or reschedule it. But in terms of experience for the audience, it's always better if you indicate your actual availabilities. The leads board is the place where you will have a preview of all the contacts that are made by you and your team members during the show. They will all be gathered in a list on this page that you can export into an Excel spreadsheet at the end of the show using this little button on the right hand side of the screen. Once the platform is open for attendees, which will happen on the 28th of November, attendees will start visiting your company profile. From this section, you will see all the different visits that happened during the show, before and after, and it will give you a good preview of the attendees that are interested by your company. So once you see a profile in there, make sure to reach out to them and ask them if they want to learn more about your offering or if you can help them run their next event. And finally, the settings uh, of the Exhibitor Center it's the place where you will manage all the team members that are attached to your company. So make sure that all your team members attending the event are listed on that page. If it's not the case, feel free to reach out to us and we'll make sure to correct this. Once all your team members are listed on this page, you can ask them to edit their settings as exhibitor members. Just ask them to go on their name click on the little pencil in front of them and ask them to show their profile if they want to be visible by other attendees and this way attendees can reach out to them and also to share their leads with the rest of the team. If this option is disabled, you won't get access to the contacts made by your team member and they won't be listed in the leads board. That's why it's important to ask them to enable that option so you can keep everything centralized in one place and export one single Excel spreadsheet at the end of the show. So that's the very first step of um, setting up your company profile on the Swapcard platform. Once the show is open to attendees, you will get access to the full networking platform. If you want to access it from the Exhibitor Center, simply click on Switch to the event. Here we are on the home page of the actual web application that will be accessible by anyone attending the event, exhibitors, attendees, speakers. So what do you have to do on this platform? Well, you need to reach out to attendees, connect with them, schedule meetings with them. And to do so, you will have to go in the attendees section of the platform where all the networking happens. So let's go there. 
At the very top of the screen, you will see some AI recommendations made specifically for you based on the details that you added to your personal profile. If one of those recommendations are not interesting for you, make sure to tell the AI that it's the case by clicking on this little arrow and the AI will keep learning about you and about your preferences to always suggest your relevant recommendations. Once the platform is live, you will also see um, another section below AI recommendations with the currently live attendees, currently live users, so you can reach out to, to them and expect um, a fast response. And below is the full list of all the attendees that are registered to the event. We know that uh, it's a long list and to help you find the attendees that are relevant to you in terms of target and in terms of leads, we put in place different filters that you can use to narrow down this list and, and identify the people you should connect with. You can filter the list of attendees by show organizer type, association, corporate, and so on. Show needs, what kind of products and services attendees are looking for. Largest even attendance, largest even net square footage, and so on and so on. We have a total of seven filters to help you find the most relevant people to you and to your company. So use them. They are there for you. They are there to help you. Once you identified a relevant profile for you, just click on that person's profile to display their main details. You will only get access to the public details of the person name, surname, job title, company name, biography, and that's pretty much it. If you want to get access to the contact details of that person, you will have to send them first a connection request. And once that person accepts your connection request, you will both get access to each other's contact details. That's the first way of generating leads at the event. You can start generating leads even before the actual even days by connecting with attendees through the software platform. So use this feature to the fullest. You can also start scheduling meetings with attendees and sending them meeting requests during the show. Click here on see more slots to see the full list of available slots for you to take meetings with that person. Let's say that I want to meet on the 14th at 1 p.m. I just do this. You can either select to meet at the business lounge or directly at your booth. In this case, I want to meet Cheryl at my booth. I'm going to click on my booth number, send her a small message and send the meeting request. If Cheryl accepts the meeting request, I will see this meeting appear on my exhibitor center and I will also see it appear on my, under my expo expo. This is your personalized section of the platform. From this place, you will have access to all your meetings, all the contacts you made during the event, all the sessions you registered to, and so on and so on. My meetings right there, and you will see your meetings showing up. Scheduling a meeting with someone is another way of getting access to their contact details. It's also another way of securing a time with them at the event to go through their needs and make sure that you answer them and that you can offer them support. So make sure to use that feature the best you can. In case you want to export your meetings to your calendar, you can do so by clicking on the option export to my calendar. This option will show up only once you have a first meeting booked. Still talking about networking, there are some other sections that will be important to you as exhibitors. The first one is the chat option, the chat section that is located at the very top of your screen on the right hand side. Click on that little bubble and you will have access to all the conversations you started with different attendees during the event. The feature is pretty easy to use. You can simply send them messages, add emojis and documents. It's a good way to engage an attendee with whom you have a meeting at the show before the meeting actually happens and you can ask them questions regarding their needs. You can ask them to send you documents about their event or the RFP presentation if we're talking about an RFP. It's always good to get to know the attendees before actually meeting them to save time at the event and make sure that they are relevant to you and to your business. Here we are looking at my personal messages. 
I can switch to my company's messages at any time. To do so, I simply click on my name and I switch to my company's messages swap card. Why company's messages? Because attendees can reach out to the company, to your company, directly through your virtual profile. And I will show you how in a second. Let me go back to the homepage, go to the exhibitor section, click on one exhibitor profile, and you'll see that on the right hand side of the screen, there's a chat window. Attendees can directly chat with the company. And when that happens, as an exhibitor member, you will receive the message that is sent to your company. Actually, all the members attached to a company profile will receive this message. And they will reply as being the company, not with their individual name. So it's a great way as well to answer to inbound requests from attendees and assign the chat to people within your team. Let's go back to the exhibitors hall. That's the place from which you can have a preview of what your booth looks like for a visitor. Just go to the exhibitors hall, click on your company name, or use the search bar to find your company and preview what your company profile looks like for an attendee. As you can see, attendees can also use the products and services filter to find relevant companies for them. That's why we ask you to complete the products and services field on the exhibitor center for your specific company. Before wrapping this video up, there are still two other sections that I'd like to show you. The first one is the buyer resources section. It's the place where all the items, all the buyer resources you create from the exhibitor center will be gathered. It's basically a gallery gathering all the buyer resources created by all the companies attending the show. And it's a great way for attendees to discover your company in another way. An attendee might be looking for a specific company, and in that case, they will go in the exhibitors list, but they might also be looking for a specific type of product and services, or they might just discover a piece of content that your company created and that will resonate with them, and they might want to contact you. That's why it's also important for you to create buyer resources from your exhibitor center to give another way for attendees to find your company. And if you click on an item, you'll see that the company that created this specific item, this buyer resource is listed on the page and the attendee can directly click on it, go back to it and start interacting with that specific company. And finally, the last section that I wanted to show you is the schedule. In case you have a full meeting pass, you might want to have a look at the schedule identify which sessions will take place during the event days and you can even bookmark sessions if you want to easily find them during the event. Click on this little icon next to the sessions that you'd like to bookmark and as I showed you earlier all your bookmark sessions will be gathered under the My Expo Expo section of the platform. That's it for the web app walkthrough. There's still one thing that will interest most of you. I promise it's the final thing I'm showing you for the day. And I'm going to talk about the mobile app. So as you can see right now, I'm showing you the web version of the app. It is accessible from your computer, it is accessible from your phone, but there is one feature that cannot be accessed through the web app, it's the lead retrieval or badge scanning feature. To scan badges during the event, to scan visitors badges during the event, and connect with them and get their contact details, you will have to download the SwapCard 2022 Expo Expo mobile app. And I will show you how right now. So from your Android or iPhone, go to the App Store and search for IAEE. You will easily find the IAEE Expo Expo app. Make sure that to download it on your phone. Once the app is downloaded, click on it identify yourself using the credentials you created uh, when you logged in for the first time and get access to the IAEE app. Once inside the app, click on the 2022 Expo Expo event to get access to the full experience. Once you're in the app, you'll see that the sections are exactly the same as the ones we have on the web app. Everything is completely the same except for one thing, 
the batch scanning feature. The batch scanning feature can be located at the bottom right corner of your screen on the mobile phone. You'll see a camera icon. This camera icon is the one you need to use in order to scan badges at the event. Let me show you how right away. I'm going to click on the camera icon. The app might ask you for an author authorization to use your camera, your phone's camera, in order to scan badges. Just allow it and simply scan and attend this badge. Put the QR code in the middle of the square and that's it. Now I'm connected with Hana. I just scanned Hana's badge. I'm connected with Hana through the app. I can take notes on Hana while I'm talking with her using the notes section of the app. Say, Hana, interesting, hot lead, and so on and so on and so on. You can use the note section. You can also use the tags section and the scoring section. For tags, make sure to um, align with the other team members. So you use only the same tags in between you. And you'll see that those tags will show up on the Excel export that you will do at the end of the event. It's a great way to easily filter that list of contacts. You could have tags by hot leads, cold leads, interested, has a supplier, doesn't have a supplier at the moment, next show in three months, and so on and so on. Just select the tags that are the most relevant to you. I can have a tag that is hot lead, for example. And here we go. I just added a tag to Hannah's profile. And the final thing, scoring. You can assign a score from zero to five stars to each person that you scan during the show. You can use that scoring feature the way you want. It can be in terms of relevance, it can be in terms of urgency, it can be in terms of quality of the conversation. That's completely up to you. Just make sure to align with your team members, put guidelines in place for the entire team that will be on site and make sure that they take notes, that they assign those tags and scores when they connect with someone. Actually, Anna deserves five stars. So here we go. That's how it works with the mobile app. For the rest, it's exactly the same. I can show you real quick. You'll see that we have access to the attendees list to network with other attendees. You also have access to all the filters. Same thing with the exhibitors hall. Same thing with the schedule. You can also access your meetings from the app under My Expo Expo and the meeting tab. So it's exactly the same thing as the web app. That's why we really recommend you to download the mobile app by the time you get the, to the show, because who wants to walk down the alleys or be at their booth at all time with a laptop in their hands? That's why we offer you the mobile app. You can have the entire event content and everything you pre prepared inside your pocket during the event. And that's the same, same app you use to scan badges. So if you're still not convinced that you should download the app, please reach out to us and we'll make sure to convince you. In case you have any questions moving forward, I'd be happy to answer them. Just reach out to us using the support email address, support at swapcard.com, or reach out to your contact at IAEE, and we'll make sure to provide the best assistance to you. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you have a great show. Bye-bye.